second step in Committee for Children, and I am very excited to uh, join you all today to 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 join you today um, with for our for our excuse me I had the wrong background up. I'm really happy to join you all today for for the latest in our SE, in our second step educator uh, spotlight series. And today uh, we are going to get a chance to meet. Uh, I am really excited to get a chance to meet uh, uh, John Burnett. Uh, John Burnett has over 12 years of experience in education in which he served as an elementary and a middle school counselor. He's been a Spanish teacher and an assistant principal, and currently he's a middle school counselor in the Houston area. He's also a content creator and the founder of Counseling with Mr. B, uh, a consultancy. Um, but before we begin, before we start, uh, I'd like to begin with a land acknowledgement. Committee for Children's offices sit on the unceded traditional lands of the Coast Salish people, specifically the first people of Seattle, Washington, uh, the Duwamish tribe. As we honor the Duwamish people and their ancestors, it's also important that we consider our place in the past, present, and future history of the indigenous peoples of our region, as well as how we can best support them. Thank you. And now I'm very pleased to introduce John. John, thank you for joining us today. Hey, thank you, Matt, for having me. I'm so excited to speak with you all. Yeah, so uh, I'd just like to start this off by getting to know you a little bit more. Um, what is it that, um, that uh, kind of brought you into becoming a social emotional learning educator? So my journey in education is kind of funny. I used to work as a bank teller right out of college and I was doing that for about three years thinking that that was gonna be the career I was gonna go through and retire. And I was like, this isn't what I want anymore. And so <laughs> this is gonna date, this is gonna show how old I am, I guess. I was looking through the newspaper and the want ads and I was like, there's a job for a Spanish teachers. So I was like, oh, wow, this ought to be fun. I mean, I've never been in education. I've never done student teaching. And I applied for the job. Long story short, I got it. The interview was like really quick. I immediately walked in. He's like, this is your classroom. This is how it's going to be. I was like, wait a minute. I thought this was an interview. But no, I got the job immediately. And I realized within a couple of weeks of being in that classroom, all the things that our students come in with, like all of the baggage that they have, um, the things that are going on in their personal lives and their families and their neighborhoods. And I was spending a lot of uh, class time working with students on the social emotional things. And I was like, well, you know, I might as well go to school and be a school counselor because this is what I'm doing now. <laughs> and that brought, and of course, as a school counselor, social emotional learning is, is kind of integrated in all the work you're doing. Was, yes. When you first became a, a school counselor, was social emotional learning like a thing that people talked about or? or it was. It was yeah? one of the. I don't necessarily remember if those are the words that were being used, but I do remember, uh, especially that my principal proactively bought a second step kit for me. And uh, being a <laughs> peer counselor, it was amazing to have something already prepared for me. So when I walked in, I didn't have to do anything except for teach the lessons and share the videos. So I had the binders back at second step. So I had middle school binders and I was like, these are actually really cool. I mean, I can go in and just add to this and make it like relevant to our students, but it was really awesome. Cool. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, and it's amazing the number of times I've had, I, I've, I've talked with counselors and they have similar stories like I was a first year counselor and I walked mm -hmm. in the door and there was this kit waiting for me and <laughs> and I'm off and running. Uh, and now I'm now we're talking 15, 20 years later. <laughs> yeah, I still have them actually. And I use them from time to time because the lessons are really, really good. Like especially mm -hmm. empathy ones. Oh, those are my favorites. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So, so kind of coming up to the present now, you've been doing all of this work, you've been a counselor for years. Um, right now, what are some of the things that you're working on to support your students social emotional learning that you're really excited about or proud of? So I have a couple things going on. So I always tell people that I work with the student side, but I'm also work with uh, like adults too. So on the student side, I have, I manage our school's Instagram account and a, a YouTube channel. And you know, I post little videos for their uh, for them based on the things that were going on, uh, topics that were going on for the month, or just uh, some of the lessons aligned with Castle. So right now we're talking about uh, making good decisions. We're talking about self love and self care. And one of my most valuable lessons that I ever taught was on Instagram. So I shared a poll. Um, I just asked my students, what were some of the things that you're struggling with? And of course, it was anonymous because many times when they are on Instagram, they don't have their real uh, accounts. Mm -hmm. anymore. They don't share pictures of themselves and they have these off uh, names, uh, screen names that you would never be able to pin it to who it is. And so I told them, I'm like, this is anonymous, but I want you to answer honestly because it's going to help me find out things and create interventions for you. And so one of the questions was like, what was the things that you're struggling with? And the answer choices was uh, anxiety, depression, um, like social emotional things like or social issues like 
gossiping, and, uh, friendship concerns. And a lot of the students answered anxiety and depression. And so I was like, well, what can I do on a school-wide you know, lens of how it can affect this affect change? And so I created a mental health fair. Mm. Just out of the blue, I was like, I was driving one day. I was like, you know what, maybe I just ought to do a mental health fair. And so I organized that on my campus. I asked some of the leaders and teachers to host some of the events. And so we had like uh, positive affirmations. We had uh, mindfulness. I brought in a community member to do yoga. One of our teachers uh, stayed after school. And she bought a blender and she bought all these different fruits. And she did like how health and smoothies are connected. I was like, that was that was actually really cool. So. And it was just a really good event. Like the families had positive feedback. The students absolutely loved it. And it was just one of those things that came from an Instagram poll. So I was like, this is awesome. That's really cool. And families got to come as well? Yes, yes. It was open to everyone. So it was after school for about an hour and a half. Families got to, uh, so we did like a bingo board. So they the visit as many booths as they wanted to. And then like we had a little prize for the ones who visited uh, as many as they could. We gave them little stress balls. Oh, that's awesome. That's a really nice, I mean, it's such a, not only is it really an interesting way to like, to like um, get information out to students and families about, about resources that are available or about things they can do to support their well-being, it also feels like just a really nice, like positive community building event. Yeah, it was really fun. And we also brought some of the community partners from the mental health agencies surrounding our school. And so they handed out pamphlets and information to families too. So it was really, it was a really positive event. It was really nice. What did you see kind of coming out of that? Did you see students kind of uh, taking, kind of putting into action some of the stuff they had learned? Yeah, you want to hear something funny? So the yeah. yoga, like at first, they were kind of apprehensive to go into the uh, the mindfulness and the yoga room. They was like, I don't know if this is like for me. And so I was like, just try it. I'm like, they're, this after school, I mean, what can it harm to try? So they went in you know, without any reservations. And then they was like, this is actually really cool. And so... Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, and so they was like, well, can she come back and do this with us again? And so I took their uh, their names and got got information. I was like, well, hopefully she can come back. And But it was just really nice for them to come in without, you know, knowing that this is going to be something they're actually going to enjoy. It was nice for them to try something new and then come out and realize that this is something that's going to benefit them, their mental health and their well-being. That's really awesome. So I, I kind of, I think, this, this is, I mean, there's a lot, multiple elements of this that are really cool. How are you kind of starting on social media and you were engaging students there in a, in a safe way on social media and then taking that information that you're gathering and then putting it into this real world action. So for for other people who are going to listen to this, who are interested in doing something kind of a similar similar or uh, or are already working on stuff like this to engage their, their, their school communities, what are some, what's some advice that you'd have for them? Well, if anyone wants to host a very similar event to what I did on my YouTube channel, Counseling with Mr. B, I have a video where I talk, uh, like, completely laid out the whole details of how I planned that process. So if you want to look at that, um, it's called a mental health fair. That's the title of the video. Um, and again, Counseling with Mr. B on YouTube, and then it's a mental health fair. Literally, I talk step by step of how I organized that event. But if you want to start on a smaller scale, what I would suggest to do is partnering with your school counselor or your mental health professional on your building. Hopefully they've uh, submitted some needs assessment. Uh, I believe in needs assessments, they give you a really good idea of what your students are needing. It's always a good idea to come in and not just randomly give them lessons because you don't know if it's something that they really need and that may, they, they might benefit from. And so I, asking them, what are the things that you're struggling with? What are the things that you need help with? And then creating interventions from there. And then the easy thing to do is sharing little bite-sized things that you can do, like positive affirmations. So I share a slide with all of my teachers with some positive affirmations, and I have them pick one. Um, the students can either write it down or they can like internalize it. And then I encourage our staff members to actually pick one too, so that they can share it with the students and how it resonates and connects with them. It's simple because it takes just a couple minutes to just pick a positive affirmation, stick to it and apply it to your everyday life. That's just one example of something that you can do that requires minimal effort and it only takes two to five minutes of your instructional time because I know teachers have to protect their instructional time too. So. Well, um, that's great. I just posted, um, if you're watching on Facebook, I just posted the uh, a link to, to, to John's uh, YouTube channel in the, in the chat for this video. If you're watching somewhere else live, then I will get that out onto the chat in those places in just a second. And if you're watching as a recording, it's already there and you can see it right there. 
Yeah, so, I use my YouTube for educators across the globe because I want to make it simple for them to, uh, to create interventions. Even if you don't have a school counselor or if you don't have somebody on there that can create those things for you, I make it very simple. Like one of my videos, I talk about five things that you can do to reduce stress and anxiety with your students. And they're simple. They're deep breathing exercises that you can easily find for free. Um, there's some resources online where you don't have to pay a single thing or you can go to Teachers Pay Teachers and buy something very uh, cost effective. But I mean, there's things that you can do to increase the mental health and your well-being of your students and your school. All right. Well, thank you so much, John. This has been really awesome conversation. Um, and I just want to I appreciate you taking the time to join us all here and share about your work. Yeah, I really love it because it's my passion to make sure that educators are set up for success. So not only are those uh, social emotional learning lessons and those quick activities for students, they're for staff members too. I've gotten so many people from my building just reaching out and sharing how that they those things have impacted them too. Because I also send every week, I send like a week a weekly newsletter for our for our staff, and they can pick like very small mental health activities that they can do for themselves too. I always, I mean, especially right now, what's going on in education and how difficult it's been to transition back into the building from the pandemic and all the things that have been going on the last two years. I want to make sure that everybody in my building is taken care of too. Well, I want to thank you very much for 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 attending and and also I want to let everybody know if you're watching this, uh, if you're watching this in the second step educator community, you already know, but if you are watching this somewhere else. Um, I really encourage you to come out and join the second step educator community where you can connect with a lot of amazing educators who are doing amazing social emotional learning work with second step with other things. Um, people like john um, and we would love to have you be a part of our community. Um, and so until then, uh, until you until I see you in the community or our next uh, spotlight, uh, take care, everybody. And thank you so much.